Now, number 11 fact. That was, smoking was the 12th fact. We're going to go backwards. Number 11th fact is those patients of yours that take selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And we all have those patients in our practice, whether they be the older SSRIs like Paxil and Prozac or one of the many new variants that we have out there. It does make a difference for you. Selective serotonin reuptake and the risk of osteointegrated implant failure cohort study. Serotonin receptors can be found not only in the central nervous system, but they're also in the peripheral tissues, such as the digestive tract, platelets, as well as the bones. So there are receptors in the bone on the osteoblast for serotonin. And the thing that you have to remember is, is that if a patient is on a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, it's going to affect the bone. So serotonin regulates bone cells by acting on these various receptors and serotonin transporter, 5-HTT, resulting in signal transmission to osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Now, SSRIs block serotonin transporters. They may increase the level of serotonin because it's not taken back up, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, but in doing so, it also interferes with the serotonin transporter on bone cells, resulting in a direct negative effect on bone formation. So the net result is stimulating osteoclast maturation and function and inhibiting osteoblast function. So those cells that break bone down, guess what? SSRIs stimulate them. Those cells that make the bone for you, the osteoblasts, guess what? They interfere with them. So it is a net loss for you whenever that patient takes an SSRI. They decrease bone mass and bone mineral density uh, at an annual reduction rate of 0.6 to 0.93%. That is significant. And this is why patients that end up taking SSRIs for any length of time usually end up with osteoporosis. So now they've got osteoporosis, and what do the physicians do? They automatically put them on these anti-resorptive drugs, whether it be a bisphosphonate or a monoclonal antibody, which can have effects on us. So there is an increased risk of osteoporosis, bone fracture, and osteoporotic fracture. Okay, SSRI use here, looking at those patients that do not take SSRIs had a failure rate of 4.6% in this study, but those that did use SSRIs on a daily basis had a 10.6% failure rate, so twice the failure rate. And we looked at the generalized estimating equation, the GEE, the p-value was 0.004, and if you remember that significance is anything less than 0.05. So this is significance, but if we did a multivariate analysis, again, where we look at the whole person, do they smoke, do they not smoke, do they take an SSRI, not, what is their age, their gender, all of those things, uh, we have a significance of 0 0.03. So no matter how we slice it, it was there. Now, when they did the study, they looked at uh, a variety of things, but what was of interest is that they found that those patients that had bone augmentation performed also had a higher failure rate with this p-value of 0.04, and again, finding with smoking that it was significance form. So if you've got a patient that, one, needs a bone graft, two, smokes cigarettes, and three, takes Paxil, it's kind of stacked against you. So it's not an either or, it's all of these things. And again, we have to look at how long they've been smoking and doing those things. Okay. When we look at the stratification of the follow-up period in a Kaplan-Meier curve, it showed that fares occurred, eight out of the 10, between the fourth and 14th month. Implants placed in SSRI users had favorable primary mechanical stability except the bone quality and quantity, appropriate implant dimensions, and good healing, initial healing. The problem was it looked great at the time you loaded it. It's once it was loaded that the problem started for you. 
and that was anywhere from four to 14 months. So it looked great, and now all of a sudden it doesn't look great. It makes a difference what that patient comes in with. It would be great if everybody came in and they were like a block of wood. You know, you drill a hole and screw it in. But that's not the reality for us. So we do have a difference when we have these things occurring. The principal reason for causing implant failure in SRI patients was associated with problems with mechanical loading of the implants. Agreement with previous studies demonstrating that serotonin plays an important role in anabolic response of bone to mechanical loading. We blocked the transporter. It can no longer remodel. So you drilled the hole, you put it in. Fine. Model, hmm, maybe, maybe not. Remodeling, probably not. SRIs may cause bone loss by inhibiting the bone remodeling process, and they might also impair bone remodeling around functional implants.